Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with sweet potato, hamburger, and slider buns. That's right, I told you I'd show you how to make these during our recently posted teriyaki burger video. And besides being more delicious, nutritious, and beautiful than anything from a store, by making these yourself at home, you can ensure your bun will be the exact size of your burger. Although I guess we could just shape our burgers the same size as any bun. So you know what, forget that reason. Let's just go back to the original three reasons. More delicious, more nutritious, and way, way better looking. So let's go ahead and get started. And because these are sweet potato buns, we need some sweet potatoes. So what we'll do is we'll peel and cube some orange flesh sweet potatoes, often sold incorrectly as yams, and we'll add those to some cold water in a saucepan, along with a generous pinch of salt, and we'll bring that up to a boil, at which point we can lower it down to medium low, and we'll just simmer that until our potatoes are tender. And just not sort of tender. We do want these nice and soft. So I'm gonna use a knife to test mine. And after checking a couple, it was clear these were ready. So what we'll do when those are tender is we'll drain them very, very well. And then we'll take a potato masher and mash these as fine as we can. And if you've been looking for a way to dirty your blender or food processor, feel free. But for me, this masher works just fine. and takes like five seconds to clean. And then once our sweet potatoes have been cooked and mashed, we will simply leave them to cool down to room temperature. They can be a little warm when we add them to the dough, but if it's too hot, it will kill the yeast. So we'll let that cool down and we'll move on to start the dough. So in a bowl, we'll add one package of dry active yeast, to which I'm gonna add some all-purpose flour, as well as some warm water. And we'll take a whisk and we'll mix that up. And the reason we like to start a lot of these dough recipes out like this is basically to make sure that yeast is alive and growing. And if it is, give it a little head start. So once that's mixed, I like to cover it for about 15 or 20 minutes. And when we uncover it, if it's nice and bubbly like that, we know that everything's cool and it's okay to proceed with the rest of the ingredients. So at this point, we can dump in our now cooled down to just barely warm sweet potato, which in addition to the color is gonna give this dough a beautiful sweetness, as is the next thing, which is gonna be a little bit of honey. So in general, hamburger bun recipes do have a good amount of white sugar in them, but here we're going with a couple less refined alternatives. And then like almost everything, we're gonna need a little bit of salt. We're also gonna add one large egg, and some melted butter. And please do not skip the egg and the butter. That's what help gives a real hamburger bun its soft, supple texture. And then last but not least, we will add the flour, but not all at once. Please, for this recipe and pretty much any bread recipe in general, start off with about 75 or 80% of your flour, give that an initial mix, and then evaluate. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm gonna throw on the dough hook. I added in almost, but not all of my flour. I let that knead for a couple minutes, at which point I stopped and scrape down that hook. And while I did determine it was too sticky and I did need to add more flour, it could have been perfect. And had we just added all the flour at once, it might have been too dry. So the point is there's really no advantage to adding all the flour in at the beginning. But anyway, I checked mine out, it was too sticky. So we just went add enough flour basically so this dough kind of pulls away from the sides. And once we do have enough flour in there, which may or may not be the same amount written in the recipe, we'll simply knead it for a couple minutes until we have a very soft, slightly sticky, and somewhat elastic dough. So that looks good. Let's go ahead and pull it out of the bowl so we can take a closer look. And as I just described, we do want something relatively soft with just a little bit of stickiness to it. And you will notice a little bit of elasticity. And at this point, we'll just shape that into some kind of smooth ball. And by the way, if any rogue pieces of sweet potato come to the surface, you can just feel free to pick those out and eat them. But anyway, we will shape that into a ball and put it back into our bowl, along with a little drizzle of oil, which we will rub over everything. And we do that theoretically so the dough doesn't dry out. And at this point, all we have to do is cover it and transfer that to some warm spot to rise. I like to use my oven, which is turned off, of course. And we'll let that rise about two hours or until doubled. And if everything's gone according to plan, it should look something like this. And at this point, we have to do what we do for all these yeast doughs. We have to deflate it, but not in the mixing bowl. What we want to do is transfer that to a lightly floured surface and use our hands to press it down, pressing out all the air. And as usual, we only want to dust down enough flour to keep things from sticking. And as you're pushing and pressing this down with your hands to deflate it, you also might as well press it into some kind of regular shape. That's going to make it a lot easier to cut up and divide into our individual portions. So as you can see, I went with the rectangle. And I went ahead and grabbed my trusty old pizza wheel and decided to cut mine in half and then into quarters. And then each quarter I cut into quarters because my plan was to do about 16 of these buns which by the way are the perfect size for a four ounce burger, as you may have seen in our last video. 
And sure, if I wanted, I could have cut these in half and done like 32 slider buns, but I wasn't into that. And then once our dough is portioned, what we'll want to do is take a piece and kind of wad it up like this, just kind of go around stretching the dough from the top down into the bottom. And once we get it into kind of a ball shape, we'll finish it on the table with a cupped palm. And basically the friction from the table and your hand will create what should be a fairly smooth surface. And once our perfect little dough ball has been formed, we'll just kind of press it down and that's ready for our pan. So let me do one more a little closer. So we'll take our dough, we'll kind of wad it up into a ball and we'll place it down on the work surface, which by the way, does not have a lot of flour on it. Okay, we want that little bit of tackiness on the surface of the dough to sort of adhere. So we're just placing our hand down like this and again, using that circular motion and the friction underneath from the table and on top from the palm of our hand combined to create a beautiful smooth surface. And then once that beautiful ball is formed, what you wanna do is press it down. Okay, very important you press these down before you transfer them onto our line baking sheet because if you don't press them down nice and flat, they're gonna rise up too high and be too round and not that classic shape we're going for. Okay, we're trying to do buns, not balls. Hashtag buns, not balls. And as you'll notice, you wanna leave about an inch in between each one because as these rise and bake, they're gonna kind of grow together. So try to space them evenly like you see here. And yes, I realized four times four is 16, but one of my dough quarters was a little bigger. So I ended up with 17 buns, but that's okay. An extra bun is not one of my 99 problems. And then what we need to do before we bake these is let them rise one more time to double, which is probably gonna take about 45 minutes. And I just used my not turned on oven again. So we'll let those rise about, like I said, 45 minutes, at which point they should look like this. Beautiful, and do I dare say buxom. And at this point we can preheat our oven to 400 degrees, while we give these things the final touch, which is gonna be a little bit of an egg wash, which as you know is just an egg beaten with a little splash of water. And in addition to giving these an extra gorgeous color, that egg wash is gonna help the next ingredient stick on, the sesame seeds. So I'm gonna take my jar of sesame seeds and give it the old shake a shake over the top. I guess you could use poppy seeds if you're one of those people. But where I'm from, if it doesn't have sesame seeds, it's not a hamburger bun. And once our buns have been egg washed and seeded, they're ready to transfer into the center of a 400 degree oven for about 15 minutes or until they look like this. Check it out. If those aren't the most beautiful hamburger buns you've ever seen, I would love to talk to you about some of the hamburger buns you've seen. And not only are they beautiful, they are so impossibly light that I really think you're going to be surprised. And yes, unlike me, please let these cool down completely before you tear into them. But I had people to see, things to do, and burgers to eat. So I tore one open, and forget their beauty and the fact that we used nominally more nutritious ingredients. The taste and texture on these things was incredible. So soft, so supple, just beautifully buttery, with just the right amount of sweetness. I mean, in my opinion, just the absolute perfect combination of taste, texture, and appearance for a hamburger bun. I mean, one reason people love fast food so much, besides the copious amounts of MSG they add, are these sweet, soft, supple buns. True story, that's one of the things that keeps you coming back. But anyway, that's it. I really did love everything about these. Next week at work, after all the holiday cookouts, people won't be talking about how good the potato salad was or that they used grass-fed beef for the sliders. Nope, no one's gonna remember any of that. The only thing that anyone's still gonna be talking about is the person that brought those homemade sweet potato buns. And you know what? That person could be you. So I really do hope you give these a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.